and here's the setup I use for pinning the bees. You can see I've got a um, couple of pair of forceps, one watchmaker and one just a straight edge. There's some of the bees that we collected uh, during the day. Uh, there's a couple of number two or number three pins on the left. And then down the bottom here are the micro pins or my Newtons uh, that I use. The smallest of them is called the A1 and there's a thousand of those come in a tube. Uh, the medium size is the B2 and there are 500 of those micro pins or my Newtons. And the last one are the B3s and again there are 500 in a packet. As you can see the A1 is the smallest, the B2 is the medium and the B3 is the largest. And then you make a choice as to which um, pin you use for which, uh, which bee. The larger obviously you use the, the B3s and the smaller you use the B2s or the B1s. Okay, let's see how we do a bit of pinning. Okay, so you can see now that I've um, separated the bees into the large and I've decided to use the B3s for these and there are three of them. I've got a, uh, a number of medium sized bees here and I've just then put out a number of B2 pins here and I've got two very small bees over on the left here and I've taken out two of the my Newtons over there. You can always tell when you do pin a, um, uh, a bee through the mesoscutum, it's quite soft. Uh, and if you were to hit something hard, uh, then most likely you've got a wasp uh, there, which is a, an immediate indicator that the wasps have a much harder uh, mesoscutum as compared to the, um, to the bees. So let's have a look what we do. Um, using a pin to be able to stabilise and move the specimen, um, I then use not the um, uh, watchmaker forceps, I use the watchmaker forceps to uh, remove the specimens from the, um, from the tube, but then I don't use the watchmaker forceps to actually do the pinning. I use the ordinary straight nose forceps, these ones here, and, and, a, uh, and I have a pin in my left hand like this. Um, I simply move it around to make sure that I get the sharp end uh, of the pin down and then I will adjust the specimen using the pin in my left hand uh, try to straighten it out and then through the mesoscutum I will push the pin down to an adequate height uh, which will allow me to put the end of the pin later on into a piece of pith. Um, I'll show you what I mean. To stage uh, the specimen that you've pinned with a minutin you need to have a large pin uh, with a piece of pith uh, that you've cut out to around about a centimetre or uh, just under a centimetre. Um, put the pin at one end and then with your fingers holding it there you simply take the specimen, the top, you rotate it round and you place the specimen into the pith like that. This means you've got a specimen sitting like that. If you wish you can have it this way and have it staged that way. Doesn't really matter either way. Allow yourself plenty of room down the bottom to put labels on, but the main thing is that you've got it on the specimen there. This means under the microscope, you can grab the pin like that and rotate the specimen around to see any part that you wish under the microscope. Okay, so let's go pin a few more. Just check to make sure which is the pointy end through the mesoscutum or through the um, metanotum. Remembering that the mesoscutum often has a lot of uh, very useful punctation characters. So it's best if you don't make too much of a mess of the mesoscutum. If you want you can do this under a uh, Maggie lamp. I find um, I'm able to do it uh, even with my fading eyes. Um, quite well. Perhaps many years of experience have uh, have given to me. One of the ways you can always test is if you stick the minutin into the pith here. Can you hear that? It, it's difficult. Whereas if you flip it over, it goes in very easily. Here's those males that I was talking about that have got the um, hooked antenna. Most likely Uriglossa. 
Here's the um, X and Euro. And here is the um, Lassioglossum chylolectus bisingulatum hallected. Oh, there's a little minute one over there, number an A1, a bit too small. Now across to the two small bees, they're probably homolectus by the looks of them. But we'll need a microscope to tell. They could be uroglis signs, I'm not sure. So see how I'm just manipulating them around? I'm trying to extend that abdomen so that it's flat. Oops, they jump away a bit. So extending around, see now I've got it basically at the PDL in between the propodium and the uh, T1, gaster T1, I've been able to squash it down and then I just place a pin uh, through the mesoscutum. And there we have it pinned there. Okay, let's try the next one. You can see that a bit slower, a bit harder. This is probably a male, see the longer antenna and the more tapered um, metasoma or gaster. Gaster is more of an ant term for the uh, false abdomen. There we are, there's those two. And then we'll move across to here and here we have those large gnomiines uh, that I collected on the cassia. Now we could actually pin these uh, with a number two or number three, um, but for some reason I like to put them onto here. Now these very large ones I'm going to stick right in the bottom right hand corner uh, of the metanotum, or the mesoscutum, I beg your pardon. There's another one there, and whoop, again I felt the, the tug of it. Okay, pop it in there. Now one of the things you can also do when you do move them into a uh, larger pinning box, if you want you can grab the abdomen like this between two pins and basically cross pin it underneath, just like that. So that when you give it a day or two to, uh, to dry, you've got the, um, the abdomen or the uh, metasoma or the gaster um, elevated nicely um, so that you have more of a straight specimen there. So there we are, uh, very simple, uh, not too hard to do. Uh, the pinning, the A1s we've got over here, uh, the B2s and then the B3s. And we simply just use a pin and a, uh, and a straight pair of forceps. Cheers. Now the last thing to do before you put the uh, specimens away uh, is to ensure that you've written a label. So here I've got the Montmorency, I've got the latitudes, the longitudes, the, uh, the date, 7th of, um, uh, of, the, uh, of November, and on eucalypt, whereas over here we had them on the cassia. So I've got two labels, so when I put them in a box, um, they'll be very easily recognised when we can print up labels later on.